Okay, it's a couple minute, minutes after, so I would say uh, let's just start. Uh, it may happen that I will not have a look at the chat all the time, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, raise up your audio and uh, just cut me off. So, um, for which I would say that uh, we skip the real basic stuff as I uh, proposed on list and uh, switch to the somehow more advanced stuff. So I want at first to have a look at some of the basics uh, because I think some are important. Um, well, and well, if you think I'm too slow or too fast or something like that, just let me know. Um, okay. <clears throat> I've prepared some slides or rather uh, context and um, one thing that is important for uh, Git is that it's uh, not like SVN that you have a central uh, server where all uh, development happens but is distributed and so if you clone the Git repository you uh, have your own uh, set of uh, Git tools available and don't work on the server unless you push things uh, there. And uh, well, uh, what you should know about Git is that <coughs> Git has a, basically a tree of commits uh, which happens one after another, like uh, over, uh, like over here. And uh, well, the basic idea is, well, A happens, then there is a patch, and uh, there's a state B, and a commit C, and so on. But at any point, you can also uh, create a new branch in this code tree, and uh, have additional commits like here, D, or E, and so on. So, uh, what we have with Git is, on the one hand, we have patches, which is basically just the modification of the code you do. Then you have branches, which is, well, you have the code tree and uh, you have um, a set of branches which uh, come after each other, uh, a set of uh, patches come after each other over here and uh, down in the other branch you have the same. And <coughs> you can switch between these branches at any point in time. So you can uh, go from develop to the release branch and so on. And then you have commits. And uh, in most cases, a commit is basically a patch. But in fact, it's a little bit more like it. And that is because uh, if you have a commit, uh, well, let's take commit E, then you know that it's not only uh, the patch from uh, D to E, but you also know that it's uh, exactly this point in the Git branch. And uh, I think that is one thing that caused a lot of confusion uh, with the pull request because, uh, well, someone created a patch on develop, like let's say he created a patch C, but uh, wants to go it into the release branch and uh, somewhere after the patch F. And so, uh, well, it basically doesn't work because you will pull in the whole develop branch because you not only pull in the patch, but the whole history. And later on, we'll have to uh, we'll see how you can resolve something like that. So, uh, but that's something that's important, I think. Um, second thing I want to talk about for uh, going to the practical stuff is the branching structure of Matterhorn, which is uh, basically something like this. So if you Google um, to uh, about Git flow, you'll find a pretty good article about this, and this is basically what we are doing. And well, uh, in a simple case, it's just like this. So you have your master branch, and you should basically never work on the master branch. It's simply for getting the releases out and nothing else. So if you create a patch, you can just ignore master. 
And at one point in time, there was a developed split of from master. And here is where all the features go. So we have uh, start with uh, the release phase of a new release. And first of all, all the features get in, and you check that, and so on. And at one point, you say, OK, now let's start doing features and uh, branch off the release branch. And no more features after this date, but you create a new branch. And uh, what happens here is all the quality assurance and the bug fixes and so on. And uh, then at the end, you will uh, merge back the release branch to develop. So everything going into the release branch will end up in develop as well. And you will also move, uh, merge that to master. So that's the basic idea behind uh, what we are doing. And well, like with uh, the release of 1.4.4 and uh, 1.5.0 we had, there can be more release branches at one branch at a time. So you can have something like this where uh, you have the uh, 1.5 release branch down here. And at the same time, you have uh, 1.4.4 bug fix branch over here. Uh, that's a good question. And well, if you uh, create a bug fix, which is important, uh, let's say this uh, over here is 1.4.4, and this down, down here is 1.5.0. Um, so uh, where would you create a bug fix for? And you can create it like at this point, and it can go straight into 1.4.4, but uh, it cannot go uh, as well in 1.5 down here. So if it should go in both, the best place to uh, create the branch or to patch would be this point, because it's the common history. Um, but we'll see later that you can bring over patches from here uh, to here. And uh, doing this down here is, in general, not a good idea because, well, you don't want it here, because, but you also want it over here. So in most cases, uh, pick the release branch. And uh, of course, if it's a bug fix for a feature that uh, was added somewhere here, you uh, don't want it in the old release branch, and you create it for develop. But most of the time, you want to create it uh, from uh, the release branch. So uh, to sum up, well, uh, we have the master, which is totally, in most cases, totally irrelevant for us. We have dev uh, develop, which is basically where you put things when you create new features. And then we have the release branch, which uh, all the bug fixes should go in. So that's uh, the basic structure. And uh, well, if you create a patch for uh, Git, what you're doing is basically also to create a new uh, uh, branch. So you have the release branch over here. At some point, you say, OK, now I want to create the uh, the patch and you branch off. Um, the branch should be named some oh, something like this. So you have your uh, Jira ticket, which is mh123 whatever, uh, and you append a short, really short uh, comment about what this uh, patch is about, and uh, you create something like this and this will go um, into your repository and in the end you can merge it back to the release branch. So that's the basic idea and uh, now let's flip to the practical part. So um, we let's just create a patch for uh, the actual uh, actual Uh, I will show in a moment where you can get the common history from. 
Start um, uh, that's basically a good question and uh, you master would be a good place but uh, there were actually better places if for example the release branch was merged back to develop by the release manager earlier but there's a git command for finding out the best place and uh, well so uh, let's create a patch and uh, first of all let's create a patch for uh, the current release candidate um, so uh, we want 1.5.0 branch. Uh, so let's check out the um, 1.5.0 branch. So it's uh, simply git check out and then release 1.5.0. I'm actually already on that branch, but uh, this would be the command to switch to that branch, and it tells me well. Um, it actually tracks the remote repository opencast and there is the 1.5.0 branch. Uh, the remote repository opencast is the one I named uh, the official repo. So uh, let's have a look at my remote. So get rid of remote. And these are the ones uh, that I entered to uh, make access to them for me easier. And if we have a look where they are located, well, Bitbucket is my private Bitbucket or my public Bitbucket repository. Uh, Greg Fork is obviously the one from Greg. Uh, Jake Perrin is from James. Opencast is the official one. Originally, is my uh, Bit, sorry, my GitHub repository, and there's the Osmo fork, which is, uh, well the official one from us anyway. and I can uh, pull and push things from there. But now we are on the 1.5.0 branch and uh, well on the right side you see uh, that I have a little shell script which always tells me where I am. If you don't know it just type uh, git status and uh, it will tell you that we are on branch uh, 1.5, R1.5.0, that there are uh, files that have not been committed yet, that have not been uh, added either, but uh, we don't care about that, so let's create a patch. Um, first of all, we would create a gyro ticket or the SMX system gyro ticket, and what we would do is to create a branch. Um, well, I forgot one thing. Let's make sure we are up to date. So uh, let's pull the latest date from the official Opencast repository. And uh, well, we are in R1.5.0, uh, so I also want to pull R1.5.0. Let's check if there are actually any changes. No, there are not, so I'm already up to date. And now what Create a new branch from patch and I'll say git checkout minus b, which creates a new branch, and then we could create uh, this is a bug fix, so I'll use t. mh uh, is something, well, not an actually uh, number here, so let's create something like that. Um, basically, you can't uh, because all uh, repositories are equal, and uh, there is something called upstream. Um, when I checked out the uh, uh, the branch, uh, it told me that it's up to date with Opencast, so that is where my upstream is. I can also have a look at um, git, I think it's in git config, where all of them are listed. So here are a lot of uh, things, remote, exactly, here are some have branches which uh, 
which uh, for which a remote is entered. So uh, here are all listed if you don't want to know that. But uh, basically, if you check out the one you are told, it's tracking that one. But you can also, I could also uh, say, okay, um, I want to uh, pull not the opencast one, I want to pull uh, my one from uh, Bitbucket. So I could say something like this, or I want to uh, push this one uh, to whatever. So uh, let's check out uh, 1.5.0 again. And uh, then, for example, let's push this one to uh, my repository at, Bit, uh, at GitHub. So again, is uh, 1.5.0. And I actually did that, so uh, it won't do anything. But um, well, uh, all uh, the repositories are equal, so uh, the one that uh, is an official repository is only our official repository because we say so. So uh, only that we track it. If you specify, or like I do, uh, where it should go, anyway, you know, the uh, upstream. But that's another story. Um, maybe it's important to uh, tell that Git has a lot of functionality. And you will find that uh, different people do the same thing differently. So uh, if you notice that you did something uh, different with uh, different commands or something like that, and it works, it's a good chance that you're actually doing the right thing, but only use a different way. So for example, uh, I use git pull. You can also uh, use git merge, uh, uh, git patch and git merge, which will do the same thing. Git pull is just a shortcut. And uh, git checkout minus uh, b is another shortcut for creating the branch and then checking it out, but uh, well, so that's okay. So again, let's uh, go to the branch and create uh, uh, a patch. Well, let's just edit the readme, I would say. Okay, it's too much text anyway. I don't, don't need any documentation, so let's just delete something. Okay, I have set that one, and now, uh, well, if we run git status again, it will tell us, okay, we, uh, there was a modification in the readme file, and uh, we can also run git div, which tells me, okay, this is a modification that was made, and, um, well, we can then, just uh, add this modification, readme, and uh, if we now have a look at that status, what will be uh, included in the next commit, and then can just commit the stuff. With commit, you will notice a lot of people using minus a. Minus a will just commit uh, all modifications without actually adding them. Uh, I tend to say that it's a little bit dangerous because you uh, always have to check afterwards what you're committing instead of just uh, saying what you want to commit before, but in some occasion I've used it too. And what I always use and what I encourage people to use is, are the both S options, which is basically you sign off your commit. and uh, the Lower one is the style of message, the upper one should be a GPG encrypted uh, signature. So let's use it. Uh, you create your, uh, um, your commit message, and the commit message should include uh, the ticket. I actually forgot which one I took. I think it's 
or something like that. Um, and then, uh, well, uh, what you basically did with the uh, commit, so let's say I removed documentation, documentation, I think like this, you can read it better. And, um, well, then you, it's always a good idea to put here uh, what you actually did. Um, the first line is a line git shows if you uh, just want to have an overview about all the commit messages. You can put a more uh, detailed commit message down here and I would encourage people to do that because, well, uh, it just helps and you have to write uh, documentation anyway. Uh, it's you can probably take most of the stuff from the driver ticket and then you will write probably most of the stuff in your pull request. So uh, most of the time I just write it down here and then just copy it to the pull request. So I have to uh, don't have to write it two times but uh, it helps to have it in here because anyone uh, who checks the commits knows uh, what you're actually uh, doing. So, uh, well, what you would write here, uh, I just, I don't want to write something, so let's just take this. Okay, um, one thing to note is don't make this uh, too wide. It's in general a good idea to break this off uh, after 70, uh, after 72 uh, sign, uh, characters, because most UIs uh, right track I use the GPGK I use for developing. I'll show that in a minute. Uh, so don't make this too wide because most Git UIs uh, expect this uh, to be cut off after 72 uh, characters. And in the end, I just close it and save it. And now I'll ask to enter my passphrase for my uh, GBG key. So I do that. Okay. And um, well, here we are. And I just removed uh, 28 lines of code. And well, if we now check with git log, uh, Let's just take a look at the last one. Oh, sorry. Here we go. Um, we'll see the commit. You got a commit message, which is, uh, is an SHA1 uh, hash. And this specifies that we are on basically on this branch with uh, the given history. So we forked off from, uh, uh, not forked, we branched off from the R1 zero branch and got to this one and uh, it's basically what uh, room it's not that you don't can't, uh, that you can't create one it's really really easy to do that um, but if we now check if there's a valid signature for this then well yes. Then we see, uh, well, it's a good signature from uh, Arpigo and so on. And uh, you can do that for every commit. Um, and it's pretty secure. I mean, uh, actually, to uh, do something uh, with your commit uh, now requires you to uh, actually fake a SHJ which one hash, which, well, there are some attacks on that, but it's a whole lot more secure and uh, than just pretending to uh, do, or do nothing or something like that. And uh, well, the for the uh, lowercase s, we see that at the end there's a signed off by message, uh, which is pretty nice, especially. Um, Oh, I show you. You actually, if you amend a commit, you actually have to re-sign it. So uh, let's just uh, amend the commit. Commit again. Say amend. 
And if I do that, and I'll save it again and have a look at this, we we'll see, okay, the signature is gone. And we got a different uh, SHH1 hash here. And that's pretty important because, uh, well, these are not the same commits anymore. These are the same uh, patches, but not the same commits. And uh, if you rebase stuff or cherry pick commits or something like that, you will also change the commit. You will not change the patch, but uh, you change the commit. Um, if you do a merge later on, uh, Git will resolve that, and you won't have a problem with uh, having two different commits containing the same patch. Uh, merging them, but um, we'll see that later on. So, uh, if you want to uh, commit, uh, amend that, and resign it, you would again have to add the two S options, and I could have to re-enter my password again. So here we go, and we call it now. We'll see that again we have a different um, commit hash, but um, it's signed again. So, uh, okay, now we created it for 1.5, but now we realize that we actually wanted this to go into 1.4.4. Uh, well, 1.4.4 is actually uh, done, but uh, you can't just uh, merge this over because I'll just show you what happens. I'll check out uh, 1.4.4. Okay, here we go. And then I'll say, okay, git merge this one. This is the one I just created. And what happens is Merging failed because there are conflicts, and you see, well, there are a lot of parts that will be added, and actually, most of them are not listed here because uh, what it. I could create a 1.5, 4.5, yes, but that's something different. Um, but what you see here is that it will basically pull in all the uh, patches that uh, have been in 1.5 before I created. Uh, my patch, and that's something we really didn't want to. So, uh, well, if we check git status now, we'll see that, well, there is are a lot of files added and modified and so on, and we don't want this, so let's just uh, throw away everything, which is a git reset, and I want to do a hard one. Okay, I'm on the head of 1.4.4 again. So on git status, well, the parts which were not tracked are not modified, but everything else is gone. So, and uh, what now if we want to bring it out, the patch over anyway? And uh, the most, okay, I have to find the object Can't write today. Check out. And I'll switch this again to uh, get the hash. Uh, switch back to uh, one point four. And now I want to put it in. Normally, uh, if you create a patch, you would uh, create a new branch from here. So we would say git checkout, check out a new branch, um, and then pull this in there. So you create uh, again t. And three or something like that. Uh, and it's this is for 1.4. Uh, 
just pick something that uh, makes uh, things clear. And uh, now I want to pull things over. So what I do is I cherry pick. And cherry picking is um, pick means basically take one commit and take the patch from one commit and ignore the history and try to apply this patch to uh, the current point uh, where we are in the uh, code tree. So if I check to pick this over, we'll see, okay, uh, I rewrote the readme and only one time thing changed. And if we have a look at the logs, Over here, and well, the last one is actually my commit with the same message but a different um, hash. And there's the last one from Greg before that. So, uh, what will also happen is that we have a look at the signature, which Again, we lost because it was modified and I did not uh, enter my password again, so it can't sign it again. And uh, what we, if you want to resign it, you would again uh, commit something, use amend, and use as uh, And that would do the same. Okay, so uh, now you know how to get over one branch. What you can also do is to uh, move whole branches from one point to another. And uh, you basically do that with git rebase. Git rebase is a little bit more confusing, I think, um, but it has a pretty good documentation. So if I have a look at this. Uh, I should want to use this because it makes things pretty clear. And um, if you have a look at this example, and what it does is basically you have the commits A, B, and C here in a branch called topic, and you call uh, rebase to master. And what it basically does is it checks out the latest state of master, and then basically does a cherry pick for each of the commits in the branch and uh, moves them to the latest state uh, or rebases them to the latest state of master. So you it would modify all commits in the topic branch and uh, well cherry pick all of them over to a new branch which is uh, based on master and then uh, throw away the old one. This is basically what rebasing means. Um, if you're unsure what to do, cherry picking is the safer one. And uh, I'll always do that, at least if I have to do that for small patches. So if you have uh, one, two, or three commits, I'll just cherry pick them over. It's easier. I want to sign them anyway, and so on. But you can also use rebase like this. So, um, well, we now, let's go back to our branch where we modified one. This one was based on 1.5 and now let's create a pull request for this. So what I now do is, you remember my remotes and the most important ones are here uh, Bit bucket, which is um, which is the one tracking my public repository in Bitbucket, and the official one, which is called Opencast, uh, where I have wide access to and could put uh, my branch into. I always chose choose to uh, pick it in my public repository because well, uh, then not everyone ends up with a lot of branches uh, if they pull from the official one. Um, so I'll do that again, and what I do for that is that I want to push the current state um, to my Bitbucket repository, and I want to uh, 
I want it to end up in this remote uh, branch. So let's just do this. Okay, it tells me that it created a new branch on my uh, repository and now can go to uh, Bitbucket. Let me let me get a browser. Okay, here we go. I hope you can all see that. Oh. Okay, and uh, switch to my repository, which is one over here. And then I go to the pull request, which should be somewhere to the right. Ah. It was on the right. Okay, they modified the layout a bit. And uh, here's source, commits, branches, pull requests. Now that's a wrong one. Okay. Oh, okay. If you uh, make your browser window too small, it will not show, at least not obviously show up. So let's try this again. Um, on the left side, there's no uh, create pull request, which was previously on the top right. And well, here's the last one shows up. This is one we created. And we want this not to go into master because, well, if we uh, just scroll down, it's a really good check to just have a look at what you will uh, put into the repository with your pull request and you see that there are a lot of commits down here and if you would have a look at the diff uh, which would knowing Bitbucket probably kill my browser uh, you will see that there are a lot of modifications so you don't want to pick master but uh, what you want to pick is the uh, release branch from 1.5 where I branched off and if I do that well we only have the one uh, pull request left uh, the one commit left and uh, that's exactly what I want so if I go to the div you'll see it's just removing the code from the readme um, and then we just create a pull request and the reviewer will take that up and so on Okay, so uh, topics we will want left out. It's um, getting things over. We have that. Uh, oh, reverting things and amending things. That's something we did not have yet. So uh, let's say we have our commit but we notice later on that we want to modify this again. So let's have a look at the div. This is, uh, you can use, go back a lot of divs uh, with uh, head and then, I'm actually don't, this sign, I'm not sure about how it's uh, pronounced in English. Uh, I will see this is what we did. And let's now say, okay, this is not exactly what we want to do. We want to modify this. So let's say we want to, documentation is good, so let's add some documentation down here. And let's 
add a lot of, a lot of documentation. Okay, there we go. And let's close this. And we wanted this to be part of the one commit because, uh, well, uh, it's sometimes confusing if you have only the small typo and then create another and another and another commit for only uh, that. And for larger changes, it's always a good idea to create new commits. But, uh, well, that's something you have to find out for yourself. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at the status. It tells me that uh, the readme file was modified again. And well, we would add this again. So we just want this to be included. And now can again run git commit. Command. And if I do that, again, I would use this bar. But if I do that, uh, it will amend the last commit and include all the changes I've uh, staged to be committed. So uh, my new things would go in. It again asks me if I want to modify the documentation. Oh, the... Um, Lower case S is for uh, this message. And uh, if I'm the author of a commit, it is not so important. But uh, I can cherry pick, for example, over a, a commit done by someone else. And if I do that, I basically modify that commit and maybe I even um, uh, have to resolve some merge conflicts and so on, and it's basically it uh, to say, okay, this one was committed by XY, and uh, then the one down here signs this off, so he modified it, he had a look at this, and he, uh, well, did something with the patch. And uh, so that's the lowercase s, and the uppercase s is uh, the GPG signature. Okay, so uh, I managed this one, and I uh, did not add the minus s option, so uh, it's now in here. And if we now have a look, that's a lock. We'll again see, okay. We have our commit, and uh, only one commit was made. Uh, the last one is from Benjamin. And if we have a look at the diff, we'll see, okay, not only was text removed before, but only, uh, also the lorem ipsum text was added here. So, and that's basically what we wanted. So that's one way of uh, modifying your commit if you notice that something went wrong. But uh, there's one thing that's really important if you do something like this. Uh, don't ever do that to existing branches on remote repositories. So I already put this branch onto my remote repository and created a pull request before. So, or I really didn't do this, but uh, I could have. And if I did, did that, someone else could have pulled that branch from my repository, or from the official one, or uh, from any public repository it's on. And if I modify a commit which is already public, and uh, the one, again, uh, pulled from my repository, there's obviously something wrong in the history because, uh, well, we basically modified the history and it will end up in merge conflicts and, and uh, you don't really want to do that. So uh, if you really want to modify a commit which is already public, create a new branch, create it, uh, call it rebase or uh, amend or whatever, 
and uh, push it again, create a new pull request, and that's a clean way to do. Uh, the other one will just uh, cause problems. And, uh, well, again, you can uh, uh, just add, you know, new commits. Exactly. It's basically that room. Okay, so, um, well, another way to, of doing this is uh, to use git reset. I basically already did that when I used uh, git reset hard, which will uh, blast that reset. Uh, which will really throw away all the changes, but you also have a uh, soft and something else that uh, you can also yeah you can use false. But uh, for example, I could use false, or I had to use false if I want to push uh, uh, this repository to my repository and override the uh, old commit I made there. But again, as I uh, said, so uh, it's in general a bad idea. If you really want to uh, think it's a good idea, then uh, think again. And if you still think it's a good idea, then at least talk with the people involved in uh, the branch and so on. OK, so. Uh, I said there's a hard, there's a soft, and there's something in between, um, which the difference is hard will throw away everything, uh, soft will throw away nothing, and everything will be staged to be committed, and the medium, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but the default one is um, that things are not keep being modified, so you won't lose the code, but will not be staged for commit, I think. Uh, yeah, so that's that. And you can uh, go back to any point in history. So we could say, OK, please go back one commit or two commits, or please go back to, uh, well, uh, let's say this is some kind of hash, uh, then you can just go back as long as it's somewhere in history. Um, let me think, what is still on the agenda? Uh, what do you want to know? <laughs> what I didn't cover, or what was unclear, or something like that. Any Questions. Oh, uh, no, remember, uh, finding out the common ancestor between uh, two things. That would actually be something I have never done. Uh, I'm always switching to the bound when I use rebase and uh, just say, please relate to that one, and I have never used more than that. And uh, you see, there are a lot of things with uh, Git you can do. For example, you can rewrite your whole history, history filtering out some stuff, and which is really, really cool if you have an old repository which you, you want to split up into several ones, but you normally don't need that. But uh, that's something different. Um, one thing I uh, wanted to show you is uh, how to find out the common ancestor between two things, which is which I actually merge base really that's one. Uh, and let's say I want to find the common ancestor between uh, release 1.5.0 and the branch release 1.4.4. And 
I can just run this for any branch, for any commit, actually. And he will just say, okay, this my commit is the one which is uh, most recent comma ancestor. So if you check out this one and uh, base your pull request on this uh, one, you can just merge it into both uh, release branches without a problem. And you can actually do that with uh, any kind of... Um, so it could uh, just enter a, um, a hash here and we'll say obviously it's the same because well it was actually common uh, ancestor but you could also say uh, please see that for develop and we'll get this one which is actually a different one because I think um, this is, would be the one uh, where our point uh, R150 was last merged into develop at least it should be the one but uh, it's an easy way to find out where to best branch off from. And again, if something doesn't work out, you can just uh, cherry pick things over. Okay, so any further questions about Git, about uh, doing uh, about the Git flow stuff we use for Matterhorn? About destroying merge, but you want to delete a branch. Uh, that's really simple. So let's say uh, go to R one point five point zero. And now let's have a look at the branches I have. And I can ask which branches are already merged. This is actually this one. And uh, so these are the ones you don't really need anymore. So you can just say git branch delete and uh, add the branch. The smaller D uh, will only delete a branch if it was already merged. So this works. And if I use it for, let's pick one. This shouldn't be merged, right? Um, it tells me you can't do that. And that's basically a good thing, but if you want to do it anyway, you can use the upper uh, D and it will delete, delete it anyway. And uh, if you want to uh, delete uh, remote branches, what you can do is something like this. Git push, let's say uh, we want to delete the What uh, someone else has branch checked out, that's not a problem because, uh, again, Git is distributed. So uh, there is nothing like SVN, the, basic, uh, the server where everyone uh, gets the stuff from, but you have uh, your own repository, which is a complete repository, and it's technically identical to the official one. So if someone deletes a branch, you still have it locally, and you locally have to uh, delete that branch too if you have that. So no one can delete your stuff unless you give them uh, permission to do so. And, well, for your uh, local PC, you, you normally don't do that. Okay, so uh, if you want to delete a uh, remote branch, you can also do that. Um, so the Bitbucket one, and let's say I want to delete that one? Uh, no. 
actually, yeah, well, this was the one I pushed. And which, uh, what seems a little bit confusing at the first time uh, is that you just put a column here and then specify the branch and push something that, like that up there. Because actually, uh, this is a shortcut. Uh, what so something like this is just a shortcut, and you would actually specify the uh, source repository, uh, source branch, then put a column and then in delete branch, and um, you, if you by doing this, you'd say, uh, okay, just pull, push nothing to this branch, and you would delete it. Okay, so Yeah, rebasing is a good thing if you uh, want to avoid pull, uh, conflicts and so on. But uh, again, you shouldn't. It's the same with the cherry picking. You shouldn't do that if your branch is already uh, public. Just do it before you make it public. So it's a good way for a feature to make a rebase uh, before creating the pull request or something like that. It uh, will avoid conflict. Error. You're right, Greg. It will not exactly avoid the conflict, but you have to resolve it while rebasing. And uh, but it makes the history closer, and in the end, it makes things cleaner. And you have to resolve the conflict till they are after the rebase away. Yeah. No, that's absolutely true. Um, the other thing to keep in mind. For those who are reading the Git rebase docs, is that there is this, the concept of squashing the log, um, which basically just takes the entire history of that branch and squashes it down into one giant commit. Please don't do that. Um, that's, I mean, for some public repositories that's okay, but with Matterhorn we've chosen to not go that route. So if you're thinking about doing that, I mean, you're welcome to do it in your own repositories if you want, but please don't do it in the public repo. Okay, uh, basically I would say we are running out of time. It's uh, time for the uh, technical meeting right here. But uh, one last thing I want to say, because uh, sometimes there are patches from anyone uh, in Jira, and Git can just apply them and create a patch or uh, create a commit from a patch. So you what you want, would do is doing something like this. You would just say, okay, git, please apply this div, and it would try to do that. Okay, so uh, I'll stop talking. And uh, I think all of you are invited to stay for the technical meeting if you won't do it anyway. Thanks, Lars. Yeah, um, the technical meeting will start in probably four minutes or so.